then I Sun Transit also provided a picture of what that might look like. And so you have you have 150 foot high uh, guideway going through a uh, Youngstown and what you see here in green that used to be housing and and some of the uh, some of the the park I uh, all that would have to be cleared to build uh, this bridge just for comparison just look at that little little car and then look at the base of of that bridge to get an idea of the magnitude of I uh, of the structure. Now, again, some people suggested a tunnel. Uh, if a tunnel would be built under, it could actually lower the the that bridge. But if you do tunnel, then not only gets it more expensive to build it now, but if we ever want to extend the line beyond the junction, it be, would become very expensive to do so in, in a tunnel. Here's a, the kind of station Sun Transit builds. Uh, this particular one is the recently opened Northgate station. So for West Seattle, uh, Sound Transit envisions having a station like this along Fontleroy or, or uh, replacing Jefferson Square or at Avalon or, or Youngstown. But the one along uh, uh, in Dalridge uh, or Youngstown would be about twice as high. As you could see on this diagram, those tiny people, you know, it will take three sets of long escalators uh, getting up to the station uh, if they are working. And uh, it would tower all of West Seattle's current buildings at about 11 stories high. So again, link stations are great along freeways or arterials or for suburban transit centers, but in West Seattle, the guide rails and large stations will cause major disruption and displacement to West Seattle. At a time, it's, it is already severely impacted by the bridge closure. Here's a map of uh, what Sound Transit uh, proposes as the light rail uh, alignment. So it shows the line from the junction to Avalon to and all the way to, to Soto. And then five years, years later, later, this, this would, would hook up. This would hook up to the a new downtown tunnel uh, Sun Transit is planning to build. So what so we what propose is to serve the same three stations as promised to voters, but serve the junction uh, business district di directly. And then uh, by 2026, Skyling could connect to the existing light rail line at, at, at Soto and the streetcar and many other options at the international district so that we can start getting more polluting cars off our roads. With the light rail, you would have to wait until 2032 to get to Soto, only to have to wait for another train from Rainier Valley to arrive to take you downtown. So you may lose 20 minutes just waiting for trains. Would that convince people to leave their car behind? A direct light rail connection won't happen until a second downtown tunnel is ready by 2037 at the earliest. Ropeways have transported people for almost 100 years, mostly for skiing and sightseeing, but increasingly for urban use, which this map shows. The colors depict various technologies. Besides 
recreational use, North American cities are now adopting gondolas for reliable, high capacity urban transit. Portland and New York already use them, Washington DC, LA and other cities are considering them. Pittsburgh and San Diego have added them to their long range plan. And Vancouver BC found gondolas more efficient and more economical to serve Fraser University than buses and rail. Kirkland has been studying a line to connect the uh, new stride uh, bus station on uh, 405 and, uh, and 85th Street with downtown Kirkland. In fact, the gov German government last year announced that they are studying gondolas as a standard transit technology option. Like Vancouver and several French cities, they found gondolas a superior option to meet their transit affordability and carbon reduction goals. What if Puget Sound would become the leading region for urban gondolas in the US? Here's an example of how Skyling would, could look in West Seattle. This is from Mexico City, where they opened their first line in 2016, extending their metro rail into the neighborhoods. It carries 6 million people per year. Due to the incredible success, they just opened two more lines, one six mile line with six stations for up to 4,000 people per hour, very similar to what we are proposing. It was built for $157 million. It has carried 56,000 riders there every day since opening, and that will increase further after the pandemic. We believe gondolas could not only be a more prudent technology for West Seattle, but in the future may become a key technology for both Metro and Sound Transit to connect the link spine to more neighborhoods. Let's have a quick look at an existing gondola in London. It doesn't have to deal with the Duwamish, but instead the River Thames. In the middle of London, the Emirates airline connects both sides of the River Thames. Cab and circle on a wire continuously. Every 20 seconds, another Cabin arrives and moves off the wire so that it can slow down for people to unload and others to board one of the cabins. Everybody has a quiet ride with a great view. To stay clear of the river traffic, very high towers were used. For the Duwamish, we would not to be build them quite as high. The gondola station is typically much smaller than a light rail station. Some systems can carry up to 6,000 people an hour. It may include an escalator or elevator for people with disabilities, a stroller or a bike. Call buttons and a security camera may be included with the cabins so that operating personnel can monitor safety. The main components of a gondola are standardized and get to the construction site pre-assembled, allowing for quick and affordable construction and therefore low carbon footprint. While for light rail, you have to clear a 60 foot corridor along the tracks and even more for the stations. Operation is highly automated and running a gondola only costs about a third of running light rail trains. As the cabins are lightweight and powered by a central electric motor using clean energy, a gondola does not generate any emissions and efficiency is higher than even electric buses or light rail. Gondola technology provides a separate transit corridor similar to light rail, but it's much better suited for our hilly terrain and waterways. It can zip quietly above houses, traffic, and other obstacles while requiring just a few small towers. This means less displacement and property acquisition, and it speeds up permitting. Going over Pigeon Point Ridge also minimizes interference with the port 
and the steel plant and stays out of the way of the West Seattle Bridge repair activities and ultimately replacement. A light rail station wipes out multiple blocks while a gondola station can even be placed above an existing intersection and therefore also allow for a lot more transit oriented housing development. Here's a rendering what a gondola station may look like. So you can, people can arrive on a light rail and take the elevator up to the platform and hop on the next uh, cabin waiting and zip you and which zips you to downtown or you take the bus and take the escalator up. I get I, on one of the waiting cabins and off you go. So the gondola would help provide carbon free transit a decade earlier. Its carbon footprint is much smaller than building a bridge, elevated guideway, larger stations and possibly a tunnel. Maintaining a fleet of light rail train cars, a network of tracks and a separate operations and maintenance facility is complex and costly. Gondola maintenance is much simpler and less expensive. Boaters and cabins can be serviced at one of the stations. Light rail's passenger fares will only cover about 30% of the operational maintenance cost, while we believe that gondola systems uh, usually operate at a, at a profit or at least break even. And that concludes my presentation. If Sound Transit builds a gondola to West Seattle, and use the savings to build light rail to, to South Park and in White Center, it can address West Seattle's transportation needs, include a more diverse ridership, meet climate goals much more quickly and provide more transit oriented housing much sooner. Therefore, we ask transit to Sound Transit to commission gondola experts to study such gondola line, which would cost about $200,000 so that it can be compared with light rail options. Thank you so much for your time. And you. can I answer any questions? Thank you, Martin and Martin. Uh, we do have some questions. I will just go ahead and put them out there and either of you both or one of you could answer. The first question is in regards to connecting the West Seattle gondola to future destinations. Um, is that, uh, would that be part of the plan? And how would you connect the West Seattle Gondola to places like White Center and Burien? Good question. Uh, there, <clears throat> there are two ways we can do it. First, we have buses. So the ST3 package that voters approved in 2016 included buses, bus rapid transit, housing, parking, bikeways, walkways, rail and the option for other modes, which uh, because of the $12 billion debt that Sound Transit landed in and the project challenges that showed up triggered section two, which, which obligates the board to rethink elements in the system that include changing timeframes, changing projects and even changing modes. So, to answer the question specifically, we've got bus rapid transit now that is being set up at Rapid Ride H that will connect White Center with the junction. We've got Rapid Ride C that connects Westwood with the junction. We can run gondola for much less, we can extend gondola for much less money down to High Point, up to Admiral, down to Morgan Junction, over to the uh, uh, South Seattle College. And if one of our, uh, we go along with Seattle Subway and, and the ST4 proposal, if they run light rail down through Georgetown and cross into West Seattle at South Park, then we can put, take a look at the black line there. We can use a gondola to connect South Park, Greenbridge, White Center, and even Westwood Village, 
and perhaps even all the way over to the ferry dock with a gondola. So basically, we're for much less money than Sound Transit was planning to spend into West Seattle, they could extend the line south and we could build two gondolas and still have the buses to connect West Seattle. So we will have multiple transit options already in place under ST3 and Metro's current planning. Uh, okay. Um, Carla, did you say you had a question? Do you want to type it in or how do you want to? Yeah, I'll just I'll just go ahead and ask. Um, so I'm aware as on as I saw on your on your website that um, I know Bruce Harrell, uh, Mayor Harrell has uh, has essentially agreed that we should look into this as an option, but it seems like what they're saying and, and some of the other elected officials are saying is that this would be something in addition to light rail, which kind of tells me that, you know, we're far enough along the light rail path that they might be reluctant to back up and do something different. Is that the, is that the way you read it or do you have other uh, thoughts on, on how they're weighing in? Now, I, Dow Constantine, uh, specifically, I talked during the uh, chamber debate about the main reason he's, uh, we need light rail is so that we can extend it to White Center and ultimately Renton. Now, Sound Transit has been, has the plan to look into that and to plan for that. But if we already spent three over $3 billion uh, on just the existing three stations, it's not, I mean, and in particular, if we, if we would build a tunnel to make it up the, the hill without too much destruction, then it will make it very, it will take a long, long time for an extension to ever reach White Center. And we believe that there are a lot of people in the southern part of the peninsula which really depend on that transit. And so by being more prudent, by using the gondola, we believe that we have, a, we, we rather do the gondola to those three stations right away and then use the the rest of the money to connect to extend light rail to south park and then we can uh, connect white center much much sooner than if we already spend our money just to get to the junction and i'll I'll tag on that. The, the first part of my introduction was, we want grade separated rapid transit for West Seattle. That's a given. We don't want to throw more than 600 people out of their homes, close dozens of businesses, cut down a forest and create five years of pollution and traffic congestion just to get three stations of that rapid transit near the junction. It's not even going to go to the junction, what they, what's planned. The thing that Bruce Harrell and Dow are not saying is that if we have to destroy that much of West Seattle just to get three stations, then imagine trying to bulldoze a 60-foot pathway from there all the way south to White Center how many thousands of people will be displaced from their homes? How many dozens of businesses will be closed? How much green space will be sacrificed? I don't think there's the political will to do that. I, somebody can disagree with me if they wish, but I don't, I don't see five miles of bulldozed West Seattle as something any candidate would want to run on. So I think the, they're saying, uh, light rail because light rail has momentum. But since Sound Transit has already approved gondolas, and since 
they're two billion dollars less just for the segment into West Seattle. And since they won't be throwing hundreds of constituents out of their homes, these are voters who are not going to be very happy. I think that they are hedging their bets rather than saying the momentum is up and we're going to continue building all the way to White Center. It's not practical, it's not affordable, and it can't be done anytime in the foreseeable future. Uh, Martins, I have another question for you if you're up for it. Uh, given the region's high winds and uh, unpredictable weather conditions, how does the gondola withstand uh, these sorts of weather situations? I mean, we don't have that much uh, difficult weather. Weather. I mean, we yes, we have some snow days. We had uh, we had about a week of snow, and uh, we had to survive the with buses buses on snow routes with light rail and with gondola, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, if you have a uh, 50 mile winds, uh, that might happen for an hour or two in a year. And then the question is, uh, you gonna go on the street to walk up to a light rail station or gondola station? Uh, I don't think at 50 miles an hour, very many people will venture out of their homes in the first place. And so if the gondola has to slow down or even stop for a little bit until the conditions improve, I don't think that that will nearly be as disruptive as the current situation with snow routes, for example. I can, I can tag on that. <clears throat> When this question about wind was first asked, we, we consulted with Cliff Mass and with uh, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric As uh, Administration. And what we found was that since 1950, in the 60, 70 years since 1950, six, well, the gondolas are rated for 65 mile an hour winds. So at 65 miles an hour, they slow things down. Just like if you're, taking the ferry system and we have heavy seas and high winds, they stop running the ferries. Similarly on the Hood Canal Bridge, they stop traffic because it's dangerous out there. But in the 70 years since 1950, we've had six days of 65 mile an hour winds. So that means out of 70 years, uh, less, less than a week has been, uh, weather that would stop a gondola. Um, we've got uh, about five more minutes and I've got a couple of people who have asked some uh, similar questions. So let's uh, fire ahead on this one. Okay. Um, if gondolas are more affordable, less disruptive, less polluting, um, and the fact that they are not a new technology, um, why uh, hasn't Sound Transit built them already? Why are they not uh, in widespread use compared to light rail nationwide? Uh, Sound Transit is a rail agency. They're not a bus agency. They're not a bikeway agency. So they, they uh, delegate those tasks to other agencies. So the buses are run by Metro. The bikeways are run by the city of Seattle. They, uh, the construction is of course contracted out. So um, that's the first thing, they're a rail agency. The second is that gondolas have not been, uh, an ex even though they've been used all over the world, they're, they're new to urban transit and no city, um, very, every city is wary of being the first. So, that's part of that's part of San Transit's issue. And the final thing that's part of San Transit's issue is that they mischaracterized gondolas in their 2014 report. They call them medium capacity transit when they're high capacity transit. So they they come at this with a bias against gondolas. And we're we're working to shift that bias to say, look, we wouldn't be doing this if sound transit and federal law and state law, RCW, have not already defined gondola 
technology aerial transit as high capacity transit for urban uh, urban purposes. Um, I think we have time for one more question, and uh, that is a couple of folks are wondering uh, if constituents are interested in this uh, in Sound Transit completing the study, what can they do to help persuade Sound Transit to get this study underway and complete it regarding Skylink? I first sign up on our petition on our website. That's the most important one. We have uh, way over 800 signatures already. And we are asking as many people, uh, tell your neighbors, uh, if this is something you want to support, uh, sign up on, on uh, westseattleskyling.org. There is a button to, uh, to, to ask Sound Transit to do the petition. And of course, contact your representative, uh, Dow Constantine and the mayor, uh, to uh, get this done. Yeah, and you can also call Joe McDermott. Um, and uh, there's a link to write the Sound Transit Board, uh, email the Sound Transit Board. So you can phone, uh, email, and of course, uh, tap the button on the front page of our website. Skyline. Can, can so, one of you, the Martins, can one of you put that into the chat, that direct link so that folks can uh, click on it if they would like to follow up? Sure. Great. Uh -huh. And then throughout the meeting, the chat will be open so folks can look and see it in the chat for the rest of the meeting. Because we're about to head into the business part of the meeting. So I just want to make sure that all links and resources that you can put those in the chat. Great. And uh, for anyone else who has follow up questions or any questions that uh, we did not have time to answer for on this program, please feel free. Uh, uh, Martins, if you would like to put your contact information in the chat as well. Uh, also, we've got our programs hub page on our website, the 34th LD Dems website. Uh, we will have in uh, ways for folks to get in touch with you if they have questions uh, to follow up on and uh, any other information, it's, it's all on this Skylink uh, link here. So please feel free to go look at that if you have questions. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Martin Poggle and Martin Westerman for being with us tonight, sharing your time, presenting this information to us. Um, we really appreciate it. Thanks so much again. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, thank you. And I think Steve is going to put, um, I have a new assistant tonight. Um, Sarah Koch is, uh, was detained otherwise. And so Steve Butts is helping me put links in the chat. And I think he's going to put the link in the chat there as well for you all. Um, Rachel, Martin, Martin, uh, thank you both uh, for uh, being with us tonight and, and giving us all of the background on this. I, it, it's an int intriguing idea. And I, I think it I think we all need to really understand it at a deeper level than you might get, you know, just passing a sign on the road. So um, thanks for all this good um, stuff to think about. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, let me get my screen up here. Oh, let me turn this off here as well. <laughs>